manifesting and mental health. It's not something that we typically put together, but I think it's important to address because in my research for having written my most recently updated book called Manifesting Abundance, it was coming up a lot about how people were experiencing a lot of mental health crises after working with the law of attraction. And I just wanted to address that today because it's a really important thing to talk about through all different lenses. Manifesting isn't necessarily hard because we are constantly doing it whether or not we're being intentional about it. The tricky part comes from embodying what you want to manifest as if you are already the person who has it. And if your mental health is plummeting, it will probably be difficult for you to imagine your life any other way than what it is right now. So if this happens to you, if you're trying your hardest to manifest positive changes, but you're not getting the results you wanted, it's a likely a sign from the universe saying in the most gentle and loving way that it's time to take charge of your mental health. And that is the topic of today's podcast episode. So welcome back to the Spiritually Inspired Podcast. My name is Sarah Ray. I am your manifesting coach. And today... I am excited to be here like I normally am, but this is a little bit of a heavier topic, but it is important, like I said, so I am excited to talk about it. And we talk about spiritual topics every single Friday, and I'm excited to have you here joining me again for another episode. And if you like what you're hearing, if you want to live a spiritually inspired life, please consider liking and rating wherever you happen to be listening so we can reach more modern mystics across the world with spiritual awesomeness. Thank you so much. So sometimes the law of attraction can ruin your mental health. I mean, if this happens, there are probably a few reasons, but there, it it probably means more than anything that you were already susceptible. You were already kind of on the edge. And this was just the thing that kind of made it a little bit worse for you. This likely doesn't really have anything to do with manifesting or the law of attraction as a whole, rather everything to do with your current state that you're already dealing with and your motivation behind wanting to manifest in the first place. People with poor mental health or poor mental health habits are often desperate to do anything to improve their situation, uh, but they don't yet realize that acting out of fear and desperation in this way will likely make the situation worse, especially if they continue to associate their self-worth with tangible material things, such as money or whatever else they're trying to manifest. If they think that their value in the world is related to these things, therefore they're trying to manifest these things, and then they fail, and then they see themselves as not having any value in the world, that is a really dangerous spiral to be on. And that is not what manifesting is all about. That's not the purpose of manifesting. That's not even really how it works. So I hope doing this episode will clear the air a little bit and will help kind of steer anyone who happens to be listening to this episode who needs to hear these words in the right direction to where they can get some help, where they can get some insight and where they can feel supported. Because that's always my goal on the Spiritually Inspired Podcast. No matter what we're talking about, I always want you to feel supported. It can be really demotivating if you're working on manifesting something positive for yourself and it doesn't seem to be working. You don't even need to be having a mental health crisis for this to be really demotivating. But that doesn't mean you failed if it doesn't come the way you thought it would. If anything, it means you just need to change your approach and your mindset and that it's probably just going to be coming to you in a different way. So like I mentioned in my research for my latest book, Manifesting Abundance, I realized the people who were saying that the law of attraction ruined their mental health or that it heightened their anxiety and or depression went into it believing that all they had to do was think positively and wish for their life to change and that it would transform overnight. Um, I also saw this all being tied to certain privileges and um, advantages that certain people have, which we've talked about in depth in other podcast episodes, which I won't talk about right now. But basically, they, from what I gathered, the people who felt like they were duped by the law of attraction, first off, thought it was a fad, and second off, were given incorrect information. So hopefully what I have to say will clear the air a little bit. Because these people who had bad experiences 
weren't able to change their thought patterns immediately and immediately change their outward lives, they ended up experiencing a lot more shame and guilt and feelings of extreme inadequacy, more so than what they were likely already feeling. So again, they were already susceptible to these feelings and then they thought they found the quick fix to their problems and then it turned out not to be that way. So it turned, they went really far back in the other direction. They most likely thought to themselves, I cannot think positively in any way. Therefore, I cannot manifest anything positive for myself. So my life will always be horrible. I saw this sort of comment and a lot of other um, similar type sentences being stated from anecdotally through people during my research. And it really made my heart really sad because I truly believe that anyone can change their way of thinking if you know what you're doing, <laughs> if you know what needs to happen, if you're working with someone who's supportive and helpful and trained and knows what they're doing. We all know that there is a lot more to the law of attraction than just thinking positively. <laughs> and I, I, you know what? I really genuinely wish that that was the case. I really wish I could tell you to just think positive and just wish, and then you will get all that you wish to have. Um, but that's just not the case. <laughs> and especially there's other books and podcasts and literature out there that make it seem that way. Uh, the secret comes to mind where it was their thoughts and thinking, like all these people changed their thoughts, therefore changed their lives and were manifesting great things. And the secret having been changing your thoughts which is true. <laughs> and that is 100% true. But that's also only one piece of the puzzle. That's only one of the manifesting phases that I teach in my programs, where we, we change our thoughts. And that's the first step. And then there's a lot of other things beyond that, that you have to do. So these people were not getting the um, other pieces of information that they needed to truly make the most out of the law of attraction. Therefore, it affected their mental health when they were already susceptible to having mental health problems. Managing our mental health can really be painful sometimes. It's tempting to just punish ourselves for thinking and feeling the way that we do, for blaming people, blaming ourselves, putting ourselves in the victimhood. It's just it's just a lot of spiraling. And it's no one's a stranger to it. Everyone's familiar with this sort of pain that comes with trying to stay in, in a positive mental state. But doing these sorts of things, blaming ourselves, blaming others, punishing ourselves, feeling guilty, putting ourselves as the victim how is that going to change anything? It won't. When has beating ourselves up ever resulted in anything positive? It won't or anything or anyone. You can't scream and yell at someone into behaving the way you want them to behave and expect them to be smiling about it. It's just, it's not practical. It's not realistic. When we're in this sort of mental space though, when we're beating ourselves up, when we're being filled with shame and guilt and all these other unpleasant things, all we can do is meet ourselves where we are. We can't expect ourselves to be somewhere else. We can't wish ourselves to be somewhere else and magically get there. We can't be so focused on why we're not where we want to be and that being the problem. All we have to do is just say, hey, this is how it is. This is the reality of the situation. And I'm ready to meet myself right here in a loving, safe space. And we're going to move forward. We being your soul and your ego, <laughs> your two parts of your personality that are in your one body. If you accept where you stand right now and you continue to express gratitude towards the many blessings you already have, and you do all of this inner work that if you've been listening to my podcast, if you've been following along all these episodes and you are working through all these positive mental or mental blocks to get towards a positive mental mindset, you will get there. You just have to be willing to do the work and you have to do it in a way that isn't shaming yourself or judgmental or hurtful towards yourself. If we refuse to see what sort of blessings we have or that change is even possible, or if we refuse to be happy, or if we refuse any sort of help, if we're, if we're just in a state of refusing, in a state of resistance, our mental health will suffer and it will not improve. So I'm going to preface this with before I continue on. <clears throat> that I am not a mental health professional. I am not trauma-informed trained in any way, but I have gone through all of these things on a, on a personal level. And I understand what it takes to shift yourself out of a, a phase of depression. If you're chronically depressed, this sort of stuff might be a nice band-aid so where you can seek help. Um, but if you're 
if you truly are in a place where your mental health is truly suffering and you're putting yourself in danger, you need to get professional help. If you are, if you have gone through the, what I described in the beginning, where you tried the law of attraction, didn't work and it made you feel worse about yourself. This is perfect for you. If you are someone like me who tends to go through periods of depression, as opposed to being chronically depressed, this is going to be great for you as well. I think, because there are a lot of what I believe is helpful points to, for the people who tend to have bouts of depression and anxiety, as opposed to people who are clinically depressed or anxious. And again, those people who are clinically depressed and anxious, aside from getting the mental help and maybe medicine too, that you need, I think things like this might be, might be refreshing because it's something that you can do. You're not giving away your power to a medicine or to a therapist. Um, but you also are realizing that there are things that you can do to make things better for yourself if you so choose. So let's move on to what mindfulness truly is, which is feeling all the feels. Positive thinking is the air quote secret to a genuinely happy life, right? However, the biggest myth surrounding the law of attraction is you must always be positive no matter what, because the basic principle of the law of attraction is that your energetic state, which is built from your emotions, your traumas, your, your subconscious, and all these other things that are part of you on a deep level are what create your vibration. And your vibration is what goes out into the universe. And the universe responds to your vibration by sending you more things that match that vibration. Like attracts like is the principal governing rule of the law of attraction. So this myth comes to form where if you're not thinking positively, you're not putting out positive vibrations. Therefore you can't manifest positive things. Well, that is like a partial truth. It's more like what your core is vibrating at is what will be manifested. You can have a thought that has nothing to do with the rest of your psyche. You can have a psyche be a certain way. You can have, um, chronic positivity, for example, and then think sad thoughts and all of a sudden your your energy didn't change. So it's more about your deep inner feelings, your where your chakras are, your trauma, where you hold tension in your body, where your subconscious are, your emotions and the emotions that are repressed and the memories that are repressed. That is what creates your vibration. And that's what the law of attraction is attached to, not your single thoughts, not your inner monologue that's going through your head. However, the inner monologue that's going through your head is really important to your mindset. And we do a lot of mindset work in the spiritual community because integrating the spirituality of yourself and your mindset of your ego <laughs> is kind of where all of this converges. And that's kind of the whole point of being a spiritual person is seeing yourself mindfully speaking and also seeing yourself from a soul level. So your thoughts do matter, but th believing that you have to only think positive thoughts to attract positive things is called toxic positivity and it cannot be any more damaging. <laughs> like truly toxic positivity is, is not a good thing. I think there are things that I think there are good intentions when most people fall down the toxic positivity rabbit hole for the most part, but it, overall it truly is damaging and not really serving your highest good. If you find yourself feeling very sad, the worst thing you can do is not allow yourself to feel really sad. It seems counterintuitive, be again, because of the toxic positivity traits, because we've been conditioned to repress those unpleasant emotions and replace it with positive thinking. Like I'm a preschool teacher and I hear a lot of um, teachers and parents invalidating the young kids' minds. They start crying. They go, you're okay. You're okay. Don't cry. Stop crying. It's okay. And though that gets carried into adulthood, you're okay. You're too sensitive. It's all right. It's no big deal. You're fine. And that, again, that's coming from positive intentions, but it doesn't result in anything positive from a mental standpoint. Sadness is there for a good reason. You're meant to be feeling all the feels. You're meant to be feeling all the feels. That is what mindfulness is. Mindfulness is taking a moment to see what's happening in your own mind, to feel the emotion that's coming up, and then exploring it without judgment, without fear, or without shame or blame. Just saying, why am I feeling this way? What am I thinking that's making me feel this way right now? What do I perceive it to be happening that's causing this emotion to happen within me? Because the thing is, is that emotions are a choice. 
and we can choose to feel our emotion or we can choose to repress it, right? If we choose to feel our emotion, that is being mindful because it will float away eventually. If we choose to repress it, it's just going to get stronger and stronger and ultimately come out in anxiety and depression and changing our vibration so we're not attracting the things that we truly want to attract. If we invalidate our own feelings by not allowing ourselves to really feel them, it will be next to impossible to manifest anything, let alone abundance. While positive thinking, again, is vital to mindfulness, to manifesting, to all these things, to having an overall happy life, being optimistic in your mindset, it's not realistic to only ever be positive. And again, this circles back to my original point where you can feel a negative thought and still be inherently positive. And the, the, the opposite is also true. You can be inherently negative while also thinking a positive thought, but eventually if you're not careful, the things can start affecting each other. Like the negativity tends to outweigh the positivity really quickly if you don't keep it in check. But while positive thinking is really important to manifesting, it's just, it's not everything. It's more about the deep inner healing that will change your vibration, that will move you forward, that will change your mental state. The major difference between feeling your feelings so you can move on and completely replacing them with positive feelings is just that. Like you're not meant to replace your feelings. You're meant to feel your feelings. So when you repress your feelings and you try to just sugarcoat it with something more positive over the top of it. It's only a temporary fix. It's just a band-aid. But if you really feel your feelings and you're allowing yourself that safe space to feel that feeling, it will dissipate. And then the happy feeling can fill in the gap as opposed to going on top of it. Everyone feels bad sometimes and everyone reacts differently to bad feelings. All emotions are totally natural and normal and deserve to be felt. And not only deserve that they have to be felt. At one point in time, you will feel all the emotions. There's no escaping them. And I don't mean that in like a really dark, pessimistic way. I just mean that as a truth of being a human, whether you repress your emotions or not, you will feel them at some point. Wouldn't you rather just feel them and then just move on with your life and feel good most of the time than feel underlyingly bad most of the time when because you have underlyingly bad emotions, just kind of being repressed and trying to cover it up with band-aids. That is what mental health is. That's keeping in tune with your mental health. That is what mindfulness is, is feeling the feelings because you're going to be feeling them anyway. And if you already have repressed emotions, which everyone does, you can still practice mindfulness by exploring those repressed repressed emotions when you get triggered, when something happens that causes a trigger trauma response in your body and in your mind that is a good opportunity for mindfulness. This episode isn't about triggers. Maybe we'll do another one some other time about triggers and mindfulness. This one is about manifesting in mindfulness. Because how boring would it be if we only ever felt one emotion and not the full range of emotions? (laughs) Life would be pretty dull, I would think. Why would we even have the ability to feel all these different feelings if we weren't meant to feel them, right? People often mistakenly believe that if they are feeling low vibe, they will only attract more low vibes. This is not how the law of attraction works. The law of attraction reacts to your core beliefs, to your subconscious beliefs and your emotions and how you're feeling today doesn't necessarily represent those things. It might, but it might not. And that's okay. You're fluctuating. You know, you're, this is why manifesting doesn't necessarily happen instantly. It's meant to happen over the course of some time because it's reacting to your core inner beliefs, your chakra system. It's reacting to those inner vibrations, not just the more surface level vibrations of your thoughts. Allowing yourself to feel low vibe emotions will not put a damper on your deliberate manifesting efforts. Even master manifestors do not manifest instantaneously. And not to say that it's not possible to manifest instantaneously, that that should not be the goal. It takes a buildup of energy in order for the universe to respond. So you feel your feelings and get to know yourself better in this way. And eventually you will build up those feelings and those emotions and those energies that will change what you're vibrating out into the universe, which will ultimately change what you're attracting to yourself. In fact, 
allowing your low vibe emotions to exist will ultimately make you a happier, more well-rounded person, more mindful person. You'll likely be more grateful for all the good things you have in your life. If you allow the sadness to come through, if you really just listen to what you need in this moment, overall, you'll be better at meeting your own needs. You'll be more aware of the things that aren't so good and you'll be better equipped to deal with them. And you'll also be able to pass this lesson on to other people, whether that be your spouse or your family, your friends, your kids, your animals, even you can learn this mindfulness tactics and then change your own life and then change the lives of others around you. If you carry a core belief that there are no good people in the world, for example, you'll only ever attract the bad air quotes people to you because the law of attraction will feel this belief inside your soul. This may make you feel very sad and defeated, which piles onto your existing core beliefs. This energy then builds up and the universe responds to it. So in order to change this, you would have to change your core belief to most people are good. All people are good, whatever suits you. And then you'll attract more and more people into your life that are good and happy and, and well-rounded. And then you're view will change and that your vibration will change and you'll keep going. So from a mental health perspective, we have to commit to our deep inner feelings. This is where shadow work comes in. This is where inner child work comes in. This is where Reiki healing comes in. All the things that we talk about on this podcast. You know, we did shadow work episodes with Delana Karn. Um, I want to say it was like episode 50. I can't remember, but I will link it below. She talks about shadow work and how you can do it to improve your own life and explore the subconscious. We talk about inner child healing in that episode too and why this is special and why it's different than other forms of healing. And then we talk a lot about um, Reiki healing on this podcast too because I'm a Reiki master. And Reiki healing is just channeled universal love energy that changes your body from the inside out. And it facilitates your body's own natural form of healing. But you have to be open to these sorts of things. You have to be open and willing and ready to make these changes. So my question for you is, are you committed to being miserable? Are you committed to being miserable? Seems like a really weird question, right? When it really isn't. You know, we've all met those people who were like, they're only happy if they have something to be mad about right? Or they only, they only do this so that they can, you know, mope and get attention or whatever. They, we've all known people who seem happier when there's something to be upset about. Is that you? Are you happiest when you're moping? Are you happiest when there's a pity party? Are you happiest when you're the victim? Does, this is a really deep personal growth, expansive question that's really hard to ask, but it's imperative that you ask it when you're exploring how the law of attraction is going to affect your mental health, because that answer to that question is going to give a lot of insight into how the law of attraction is going to play out in your life. Our human brains have evolved to focus mostly on negative things purely in terms of survival right? That's where the fight or flight response comes in. Focusing on being hardwired to focus on the negative things ensures our physical survival from like a primal standpoint. And there's a tendency to blow that negative way out of proportion, especially now in our modern age, when we don't necessarily have to fight for our physical survival on a daily basis. We're more focused on our like material world survival, right? So we are even more susceptible to blow up the negative way out of proportion, make it seem way worse than it actually is in our own lives. If we're afraid, we're less likely to put ourselves in a situation that would kill us. So that is why this is happening. <laughs> or we're less likely to put ourselves in a situation that's going to harm our lives or our well-being or our people in our lives in some way. This primal belief continues to bleed into our modern society in every way. And people are committed to embracing it. They're committed to being miserable. People who are committed to being miserable are likely stuck in a coping mechanism of some kind for, or several, probably more likely several, and that makes them feel safe. Or maybe all they've ever known was depression. So they don't realize that it can, there can be another way. So therefore they're committed internally, subconsciously to maintain whatever it is that's keeping them in that mental state. They rationalize with themselves and they say that it's better to stay in negative for whatever reason, which is a familiar mental space. And then they don't want to step out of their comfort zone into the unknown, no matter how great the rewards may be, because they don't think that there are any rewards there for them. 
for whatever reason. And if someone lives in a toxic negative mindset and they don't know how to break free from it, they might benefit from faking positivity in the long term, in the short term, right? (laughs) I mentioned band-aids earlier, right? How you have your negative mindset and then you push, or your negative thought rather, and you put your positive thought over it and it just acts as a band-aid. While that is a temporary solution, I do think it might be helpful for some people to just like instantly turn it around. Um, I sometimes I suggest this with my clients, depending on their own demeanor and their own temperament, where as soon as you catch yourself thinking a really negative thought, like, wow, I'm really fat. I look really fat today. Oh, wait, nope. I am beautiful. I am beautiful today. So I see how I turned it around. I put a bandaid on. I didn't truly address the underlying beliefs of why I think this about myself. But what I am doing is opening my own eyes to realizing that there's a different way of thinking, that I don't have to think that way about myself. So it, I think it can be helpful, but this is really teetering the line back into toxic positivity, where if we do this too much, then we get into repressing and we don't want to repress. But what we do want to do is know that there's another option. There's another possibility. And um, eventually you will have to work through those underlying issues, right? Eventually you'll have to address yourself on a deeper level and say, why do I think this about myself? And then that's where the deep inner work can happen. But only once you realize that that can even happen, only once you start to change what the inner voice in your head is even saying. And a lot of people who struggle with anxiety and depression and who are committed to being miserable, they, their inner voice is very mean. It's very rude. So I think that it is a good place to start for a lot of people to just catch or at the very least, notice what your in your internal monologue is saying and trying to change it. But then we can't talk about this without talking about pos- toxic positivity, which is repressing. So uh, here's an analogy for you. Think of your low vibe emotions as a long underground tunnel. <laughs> you are under the tunnel, you enter the tunnel and either on purpose or you just find yourself there somehow you're in the tunnel and you look back down the tunnel where you came from. And you can easily see and obsess over the path that you've already taken that has brought you here, right? You've gone down the certain turns. You somehow got here. You're constantly looking behind you and you just are thinking about how I got here. How did I get here? You can also just sit down and be swallowed up by the darkness and wishing you can go straight up to through the ceiling to escape the tunnel, but you know that you can. So you just kind of sit there and you just prefer to be stuck because you don't want to go back the way you came because that wasn't helpful. You don't want to go forward because that's the unknown and that's scary, but you want to go straight up, but you physically can't. Or you can glance backward and acknowledge where you came from and then turn and face forward again and keep going because you can clearly see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel to use that cliche. You keep walking through the darkness for a bit and you know, you will get to the light soon and you will keep walking and you will be free. You just have to be willing to move forward. This is the difference between a negative mindset and a positive mindset between being inherently positive and being inherently negative. The inherently negative people, the people who are really struggling with their mental health and might be suffering from anxiety anxiety and depression and being committed to being miserable, they might be sitting in the tunnel and they might be thinking that the only way to fix this is through a way that's impossible. But an inherently positive person might say, hey, I don't like the way that I came from, but I'm going to keep going forward anyway. And neither of these are right or wrong. It's just an analogy for you to kind of hopefully decide where it is that you're, you are currently right now with your mental state and what you might decide to do about it in the future, hopefully very soon. So I've mentioned it several times now. I want to talk more about toxic positivity. Toxic positivity exists as does toxic negativity. Both these things exist. The former ignores the darkness while the latter ignores the light. Toxic positivity is how anyone manifests. Toxic positivity is not how anyone manifests good fortune. (laughs) We can't live life to the fullest if we are only focusing on the lighter emotions and ignoring the darker emotions. It's just not how it works. Doing this will cause repression, repression and resentment. Over time, darkness will build up and higher and higher and higher. The tunnel is going to get darker and darker and longer, seemingly longer, until we cannot ignore the darkness anymore. And it's going to come out in some way, whether that be depression or anger or anxiety or whatever else, however your emotions refuse to come up. Maybe a life-threatening situation. It's going to come down. Maybe a mental breakdown is going to come out somehow. 
Positive thinking is only a small part of transforming your life with the law of attraction. If all of our thoughts are negative and self-deprecating, how can anything be more difficult than that? You know, it seems nearly impossible. And there's a major difference between putting ourselves down and learning within our negative emotions. So we're feeling negative in the moment, but we're not criticizing ourselves. We're just acknowledging like, wow, I feel really sad. I feel really um, horrible that this happened. And this is what I'm thinking about this event. It's not the same as like, wow, I suck. I, w I shouldn't have done that. That was a really bad thing of me to do. This was really horrible. And now I'm stuck in this place thinking that I'm a horrible person attacking your own character. And it's just not, that's not um, a good way to handle how your emotions. And it's does kind of pave the way to eventually feeling depressed and feeling anxious of being self criticizing so much in that way. Learning that this difference here takes a lot of self-awareness and self-forgiveness. Learning how to just sort of sit with your emotions and to not let it consume you. It takes a lot of um, doing it in the moment. You can't put it off. You can't just sit down every night at 9 p.m. and work through these emotions. You have to do it in the moment. And therefore, it's a, it's a big commitment and it takes a lot of awareness and forgiveness, but I know you can do it. You wouldn't be listening to this episode if you weren't able to do that. The negative emotions have something to teach us and to expose us to. They are a reflection of something that's going on within our body that we can address that can ultimately change our vibration, which ultimately changes what we are attracting via the law of attraction. We can choose to work through these negative emotions. We can let them grow, go, and then we grow as a person. Negative self-talk is often the result of trauma and or years of suffering in some way. And that is feeding the negative emotions staying there. Negative self-talk also teaches us nothing other than how easily thoughts and opinions can manipulate us. <laughs> I mean, if we believed every single word we said about ourselves, why would we not just say something positive instead of something negative? The negative emotions will probably dissolve away much quicker than the negative self-talk will, but you can still choose to change these things with the quick uh, positivity band-aid and with the deeper inner work, such as shadow work, such as um, inner child work and meditation, all these other things that can help you re remove the traumas that you're emanating through your emotions. So we need to put in the effort in order for this to actually happen for ourselves. And it does get easier once we learn to differentiate between a negative opinion about ourselves and a negative emotion that's triggered by an outside circumstance. Both are important to work through before we can truly adopt a more positive mindset and therefore change what we're manifesting in our lives. But does anyone ever really live without ever having a negative mindset? No. They don't. So you can't expect that from yourself either. I can totally understand the appeal of the perpetual positivity myth, especially for those who have been stuck in perpetual positivity and or perpetual negativity in the past. And the switch to perpetual positivity seems like the natural way for things to change, but you're not actually addressing any of the root of the causes. Positive thoughts alone are not enough to truly change the root problems. Mindset is an important piece of the manifesting puzzle, but it's only one of four pieces, four phases of manifesting. A single piece in a thousand piece puzzle <laughs> doesn't necessarily change the look of the entire puzzle, but it does decide whether or not it's finished. I like analogies. <laughs> I hope these analogies make sense to you. The phases of manifesting, again, I will recap for you, are mindful or mindset shifts, uh, intuitive planning, mindful action and letting go. So mindset shift is usually where most people start. And sometimes if you're in a really low mental state, the mindset shift is the hardest one, but it's the biggest hurdle to go over. And the rest of it will be a breeze. If you're willing and able to step out of that sort of belief that things can't change or that you need to do a complete 360 right now in order for things to manifest differently in your life. If you ever come across anything law of attraction related that tries to tell you that all you have to do is just believe and wish and think your way to change your life, just throw it out. Do us all a favor and just get rid of it <laughs> because that is patronizing and it's absolutely false. And it does harm the people who are already struggling with their mental health. Like truly, like if imagine being in a really depressed state and then coming across something like the secret that says all you have to do is change your thoughts and change your life. 
and you go, cool, I want to change my life. So I change my, try to change my thoughts and I can't, oh, I guess it's just not for me. I guess I can't change my thoughts. I guess my life is never meant to change. This is what happens when they're not given the proper full amount of a law of attraction literature. Anyone who truly believes life can be true, transformed only through changing our thoughts and nothing else has been fed lies. Or they probably aren't realizing the other types of things that they were doing to change their lives. It's just simply not true. I wish it were, but it's not. And I'm sorry to burst your bubble. <laughs> we have to be willing and ready to do our fair share of the work. We are manifesting regardless of how much or how little conscious effort we're putting in. Choosing to put in no additional effort at all will only result in more of what we already have. And maybe that is what you want right now. Maybe you're not feeling clinically depressed right now. So you're okay with kind of being here and living in the state. But if you're not willing to put in that effort, um, whether that effort involves, you know, doing work on your own, as well as your medication, as well as your therapist, as well as your coach or whatever it needs, it means for you, then you, your life will never change. Nothing changes if nothing changes, right? That's my favorite proverb. Something has to give at some point. But at the same time, you also need to know that your state is okay to be in. There's nothing to blame for. There's no one to criticize for this. It's just simply your path and it's okay. Your path is perfect. Your path has brought you here and you're meant to be here right now so that you can learn exactly what it is you're trying to learn in this life. Wishing for something to change, but we don't take any action for it to change. It's just a waste of energy, just a waste of time. Anything we can do to actually make that change happen is not a waste of time. And it's energy that we could have been spending, spend on doing on other things, right? <laughs> Wishing and believing are very important to manifest abundance and transform our lives, but that's only half of it. It's literally only half of it. The other half is action, honest, dedicated action, as well as letting go of the outcome. So I know I touched on a lot of different points here in this podcast episode, and it's a little heavy, but I'm telling you that there are so many amazing things that you can manifest. You are so empowered to manifest no matter what your current mental state is. You are able to do this and I can teach you how to do this. I can teach you to go far beyond what just thinking and wishing will do for you. I go far beyond the teachings of the secret or really any other manifesting thing out there because I teach four phases of manifesting and I'm teaching it for free right now, I have something really special to offer you in this masterclass. If you go to spirituallyinspired.co slash manifesting, you can sign up for my free manifesting for beginners bundle. It's perfect for everyone and anyone who is learning to co-create with the universe, especially if they've tried before and what they learned didn't work for them. So spirituallyinspired.co slash manifesting includes a 60 minute uh, manifesting workshop for, for free, completely free. And it, um, is from a place of beginners where if you're a total beginner, you have no idea what the heck you're even doing, what the law of attraction even means. That is the perfect place to start. It also comes with a companion workbook that will help you work through not only the class, but also 30 days worth of manifesting magic. So you can cultivate, begin to cultivate a new mindset for yourself as well as an exclusive ebook that is not sold anywhere else that is available only in this bundle all about manifesting. So you can revisit it at any time. I designed this bundle to be accessible as a starting point um, for all who are ready to empower themselves through the art of manifesting. And this is such an important life skill. I believe that everyone is capable of learning it and has the right to the knowledge of it. And that is why I'm offering you this free manifesting for beginners bundle, 60 minute workshop, workbook, companion book, and an, an exclusive ebook simply at spirituallyinspired.co slash manifesting. I can't wait to see you in that masterclass and it's evergreen. You'll always be able to access it once it goes live there. If you're listening to this in real time, it's not going live for a couple more days, but if you're listening to this at any other point in time, you'll be able to get the manifesting course right there, spirituallyinspired.co slash manifesting. I hope this episode was helpful for you. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you next Friday. Bye. 
Thank you for listening. If you want even more spiritual awesomeness, there's plenty waiting for you over in our free Facebook group. Join us for guided meditations, guided rituals, Reiki shares, master classes, tarot readings, Q and A's, and plenty of discussions with other modern mystics. This is a totally safe space to ask questions, meet other like-minded, open-hearted women, and our community truly won't feel complete without you. So head over to spirituallyinspired.co slash free group to join today.